be bad the curve you go. My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're talking about carbs. So, this is uh, first of the carb series. Uh, series. In a week or two, we're going to start looking at the actual carb bodies and the ones that I've been chopping into. We'll look at the difference between flat sided carbs, uh, SVs, updrafts, blah blah blah, and all this rubbish. We're also going to start going back in time as well and looking at some really simple early versions and some more modern sexy bits and the materials they use we're going to talk about the materials they use we're going to talk about the additions that they've added cold running circuits enrichment circuits all this that and the other using diaphragms instead of just this and why they have springs what springs throttle bodies chokes all the good stuff but there's a few things in carbs that people know exist they just overlook of why they are there full stop so the first thing we're going to talk about today is fuel balls we're not going to talk about venturis and all this yet yeah, that's already ish in the car in the um fluid dynamic series um but we will we, that will be the next one we need to go on to but fuel balls it seems a bit mental and people generally don't even think why they exist but you have a fuel tank let's go for an old school fuel tank you have a fuel tank like this and let's just say you have um, a carb like this and then you have your top bit with a slide in it or something shit like that right you just have a carb like this. Now, what we can do is we can just have a pipe that goes up into the bottom like so. And then we can have a slider in here with a needle that just goes into a, 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 a thing that was designed, you know, to just have the, just like a, a, a jet with a pipe on it. So now we've got the carb and we're all gravity fed. Most carb systems, most, not all, most carb systems are gravity fed so uh, you are using the acceleration of the earth's gravitational field <laughs> to basically push down you know we all know how gravity works um so all is good our carb and our engine well our carb is below our tank and all is good and this would not work this would not work very well whatsoever and that is the important bit we need to have a fuel bowl. But why do we need to have a fuel bowl? Well, it's all about hydrostatic pressure. We all know, we all did it at school, if you have a fucking container like this, full of a fluid, that if you have a hole here, and a hole here, and a hole here, that this one will piss out like this, this one will piss out like this, and this one will piss out like this. Now, why is that? It's not because there's more gravity up here or anything stupid like that it isn't because it just looks pretty and we want this curve like this it's because of hydrostatic pressure the weight of all this water at all these different levels so we could say we have a kilo here we have two kilos here by the time we get up to there this is the totals so these are the totals so every band is a kilogram and then we have another kilogram here, which means it's three, gram, three kilos in total. So, there's three kilos of water here pushing down to push water out here. By the time you, you know, if you're here, there's only, we're in this one kilogram here, so this only gets one kilogram. This has two, so that pushes out like that, and so on. It is the weight of the water that applies a pressure. You know, when you go further down to the ocean, you get higher pressure to the point where your fucking brain comes out your ass. Um... You know, it is the weight, that column of water on top. And this would happen in your tank, which would not be good, right? We need to meter the fuel. What we need to meter the fuel, or the reason why is the stoichiometric value, ratio, whatever you want to call it, which is the precise, uh, the, the correct mixture of just adding the Goldilocks. Just add the right amount of fuel to just the right amount of oxygen. So we get nice, nice, efficient combustion. So if we went back to our old tank, like this, and we had it full with fuel, and then we had our carb jobby like this, let's do that, it's easy for me to draw. And then we had a fuel line coming in, coming in like this. The problem with this system is that when you had a fuel tank, you would run rich. 
uh, really rich because the pressure in this system of it put all that weight of that water pushing down would push a lot more fuel through and then when you're down here you would run lean so the problem is is you probably won't even start here and if you did start here if you could get to run and it is running rich you'd only have to fucking eat a tiny bit of your tank before it'd like lean out and then it'd stop so this is the problem what we need is we need a tank we need a tank that has the same amount of fuel in constantly a known volume of fuel so that this hydrostatic pressure or lack of it because of the way a carb works but we these there isn't we've got rid of this hydrostatic pressure that's what we're trying to do so what we do is is we have our our carb let's do our carb again like so with our slider and all this shit and our needle and our jet and then what we do is, is we stick a tank of our jet going down like this and we stick a tank and we try and maintain well we do maintain we maintain that level you see that that's the thing we're not even dropping it that's the important thing we need to maintain this but how the fucking hell do we do that well we have a massive tank a reservoir tank an actual tank that can pour fuel into here but then we need it to be closed so when this level drops, we need to fill up the tank. When, the, when it drops, we fill up the tank, but not overfill that tank. And that's why we have weights with a pivot and a valve that closes it. As soon as that level starts to drop a bit, then we basically let some more fuel in. And then as soon as it gets to a certain level, it cuts it off again. Now, you can have problems with this system. When you start leaning the bike left and right and all the rest of it and so forth, you are going to start to fool it in a sense to think that the level's a bit funky. That is why um, all your floats are a certain type of shape. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the buoyancy of them floats in a future video. Um, and why the shape of the ball is the shape of the ball to help counteract that. Um, but this is how it works. So it doesn't matter if we've got a level up here or a level down here so this is high pressure this is low pressure and we're not talking about vacuums and air pressures no so we're talking about hydrostatic pressure so this is high because a lot of fuel there's a lot of fuel pushing down on this valve but the buoyancy of this uh, float should be enough to keep that closed and then when it drops same kind of thing the fact of the matter is there is more hydrostatic pressure and that is one of the problems with carbs to a degree is the fact that um, there always is varying pressure. There is going to be higher pressure in this pipe against this valve seat and there is going to be lower pressure. So there is a slight change. However, that's another, re that's another way of how you calculate this volume in here. You try and go for a volume that is going to give you good, um, a, a, a smoother stability over this higher and lower pressure. You see, even just for fuel balls, there's a shitlo shitload to it. And this is why people say, oh, carb design is, is, you know, it's a dark art, it's a black magic, it's fucking voodoo or whatever. It's because there are the stuff in this that people don't even think about. Hydrostatic pressure of your, you know, your fuel system is something that people generally don't think about. Sloshing the bike side to side and all the rest of it. Does that open your fuel float and flood it? How you have to design a float? You see, we haven't even got into jets. This is the thing. The jets is actually one of the easier bits about it a lot of the other circuits that they run are a bit harder and all the rest of it but it's actually a lot of it is the um, actual architecture of a, a carb is just as important and all the rest of it we'll get into diaphragms and like i say we'll go through the whole fucking thing um you know even just avoid venting that that's a video on its own but that's awesome and you, it's just yeah crazy stuff a rod so i hope that makes sense of exactly why we have a fuel ball it is a mini tank to your big tank. It is a stabilization tank, basically, that's what it is. Your fuel ball is there, basically, just to smooth out any interference from any physical attribute that may be going on in your tank. Hope that makes sense, I'll see you in a bit.